This is Christ and COVID-19 Part 3. I'm Pastor Matt Agee, and this is a simple resource for us during this time to help us think through and to process through with God's Word uh, what we're experiencing. And so this is primarily for our young adults at Grace Church in Des Moines, but it may be helpful for you uh, wherever you are. So thanks for, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to start this video uh, by thinking about the emotional range that we may be feeling during a time like this. Uh, there can be panic. There's certainly fear. I find that the emotions that I have are kind of like a suitcase, and they're all in there together, and sometimes they all just flow out. So if, I, if I'm experiencing fear, that's probably because I'm experiencing a certain level of anxiety. If I, if I am anger, or if I'm angry rather, that means there's probably some other emotion that came first. We're really just a big jumbled mess, friends. If we're disciples of Jesus Christ, that means that as Scott Sauls says, we are incomplete works in progress. And so uh, just, just a little bit of help on, on the emotions that we may feel. Um, I, would actually, I would actually say that, it's, that it can be healthy to allow ourselves to feel emotions like fear and others as long as we know what to do with them. Uh, biblically as Christians. And so just a quick piece of advice, uh, a phrase that I heard uh, Tim Keller, Pastor Tim Keller in New York say at one point, uh, he says that all emotions, <clears throat> excuse me, should be processed through prayer. All emotions should be processed through prayer. And so those emotions that we're feeling, again, primarily I think for us in this season, it's going to be fear and anxiety. Let's process those through prayer. Let's take them. Let's take those to the throne of grace where we will find help and mercy in our time of need. Let's, uh, let's draw near to the high priest who is living to intercede for us. And let's remember that he's good, that he's sovereign, that he's wise. And let's process those things. Let's, let's think about those, those emotions in his presence. Better yet, let's search God's word and let's go to that prayer book that we have in the Bible, the book of Psalms, and let's find an emotion, or let's find a psalm, rather, that helps us express that emotion. Uh, John Calvin said the psalms are, are the anatomy of the soul. We are going to find every dimension of the human soul uh, outlined and found in the, in the book of Psalms. So let's, uh, so let's do that. So just a little help um, with that. And again, I'm, I'm with you in this, trying to, trying to work through this in that way. Specifically today, I want to think about uh, the, the, the reality of time specifically of redeeming the time. Now, this is a phrase you've probably heard, uh, and that's a phrase that means making the best use of the time, using the time wisely, not wasting the time we've been given. And, and let's think about, let's just double click on time itself for a minute. Time, time is a gift. The Bible talks about this. It's given to make us wise. Uh, we know Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season or a time. And, and, and this is something that landed on me yesterday as I was, as I was preparing for this. Time is one of the only realities in our lives that is given equally to everyone. I'll say that again. Time is one of the only things in our lives that is given equally to everyone. Hardly anything in life is spread out evenly across the board, whole to everyone equally. But time is. Now, uh, we all certainly... Um, uh, have, have our own death day. We don't all die at the same time. Um, our lifespans are different, but in, a, in a, any given 24-hour period, we've all got the same amount of minutes, seconds, and hours, and that's quite a thought. And so let's start, let's start with, that, with that thought and, uh, and move on from there. So I'm going to quote a, a, famous, a famous line from literature. You've probably heard this at some point. Uh, this is uh, from The Lord of the Rings. This is Gandalf the, the wizard speaking to Frodo, the ring carrier. And again, you probably heard this, but it's really, really helpful. Uh, the conversation between these two goes like this. I wish it had not happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide, listen now, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Or, or, look carefully then how you walk not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. The Apostle Paul, Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. This is a biblical theme. And again, one of the most well-known biblical warrants was what I just quoted there. Again, Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil evil. Just a few comments here. That phrase, making the best use of the time, is a translation of one Greek word, the word redeem. It's just one word, and that's our English translators trying to help us understand it better. 
making the best use of the time or to redeem. Uh, that's where the phrase redeeming the time actually comes from. So it's, so it's buy back this time, make this time yours, uh, bring it into your life and use it well. And so that's what we want to think about. We want to think about redeeming the time, using the time we have been given. And uh, the reason the subject is important is because I would guess that I'm communicating with people uh, right now who at this season have more time on their hands. I've communicated with some of our college students specifically uh, who have said, you know, I've just got, I've just got some time on my hands. Uh, mainly for all of us, I would guess, just simply because some of those basic movements in our life are gone or, 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 have, been, or have been suspended for a while. We're not, um, we're not going out to restaurants. We're not uh, shopping. Malls and parks, even here in Des Moines, they're, they're, um, they're making some decisions about what to do with local parks, of which we have so many, and my family personally enjoys so much. Um, and so uh, that, that's one reason. And, and I, I want to say this too. For some of us, this, this reality of having some free time on our hands is, is an unwelcomed, unwelcomed fact. Uh, it's unwelcomed because you have more time on your hands because your hours at your particular job have been shortened or you have been laid off entirely because you're in a small business scenario and they're having to make decisions about, about the fact that patrons aren't able to come in. And uh, I, I posted a picture last week, my favorite restaurant here in Des Moines is Monterey. Many of you know that right over there in Altoona. And um, I posted a picture just of the inside of their dining of just the restaurant. And you know, they've got chairs up on tables and uh, it's, you know, my family and I go there all the time. We eat there a lot. Uh, it's the same pretty much 15 or so guys, uh, guys and ladies that work there. And so I, that's their job. That's, I would assume that's what they do unless they get off at close and then go do a third shift job, uh, which I, which I doubt. So this is their job. And so you go in, they're doing takeout only like a lot of restaurants are. And, uh, there's two guys up front and I'm assuming some cooks in the back and that's it. There's nobody else in the restaurant. And so, um, those guys are effectively those other 13 to however many guys are effectively not working at that time. This may be a very unwelcome time for you. And so on that note, I wanted to pause for a second and read a passage of scripture that, have, that I've always found helpful and that I tell our young adults often, if you don't need this passage of scripture now, you need to hide it in your heart because you'll need it at some point. And it's Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19, and it says this, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Now that is a eerily similar situation with what some of the projections, particularly about our economy, I'm not going to get into those things, uh, could look like. Fig tree is not blossoming. There's no fruit on the vines. The produce of the olive has failed. The fields have yielded no food. The flock has been cut off from the fold, and, there, and there's no herd in the stalls. I mean, that, that, that is a description of, we would use words like recession and depression. I mean, this is, this is, these are, this is all language indicating economic stability and viability and it's all and it's all gone but i want you to listen to verse 18 here's what habakkuk says yet i will rejoice in the lord and i will take joy in the god of my salvation god the lord is my strength he makes my feet like the deers he makes me tread on the high places friend if you're in this situation uh it's unwelcomed and i'm so sorry and um i will pray f i am praying and i would ask you to join in praying for these praying for people you know that are in this situation, for supernatural strength to accept this unusual providence that we've been given and to believe verses like this. So back to our subject, what, what to do with the time that has been given to us? What to do with the time? Now, let's, let's be clear, this question of time and it being important and as disciples of Jesus wanting to steward time has always been important. It was important before the coronavirus uh, outbreak and it's certainly important now. So we want to use the time well for the glory of Christ here, there, and everywhere, among our neighbors and among the nations, as we say here, grace across the street and around the world. I, I think, I think uh, John Piper would say something like, don't waste the corona crisis. Don't waste the corona crisis. Let me give you two things among a thousand uh, that you can do that I, to, to, I believe, steward this time well. Just two, friends. First, I would encourage you to, um, to read the Bible every day looking for, with an eye toward, descriptions and depictions of the sovereignty of God. Read the Bible every day with your eye for, looking for, depictions and descriptions of the sovereignty of God. And allow your heart to be comforted by the fact that nothing in human existence 
is a cosmic accident, that everything is under his sway and control. As Psalm 115 says, the Lord is in the heavens. He does all he pleases. What a phrase, all he pleases. Think about his sovereignty. Uh, I know um, uh, you probably with me saw the, uh, the number of celebrities who posted a few days ago, all of them singing uh, John Lennon's Imagine. College students, we've talked about this. That song, Imagine, is the secular mantra. Uh, that is secularism put into, put into song. And um, here, here, would be my, uh, here would be my discussion with, some, with one of those celebrities. What is more comforting? This would be a starting place. What is more comforting to people to believe that there's no heaven above us, there's no heaven above us, only sky, or to believe that there is a, 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 an, an omnipotent, omnipresent uh, God who is ruling and reigning and who, although may work in ways we don't understand, is beyond, it, it, and so is beyond our scrutiny and therefore may have a reason that we cannot immediately perceive for why things are happening the way they are in the world. Which would we find more comforting? I would, I would commend you, friend. Maybe you're watching this and you, and, you, and, you are, and you are thinking about this. Above us only sky, a blind chance universe does not care about people who are dying of, dying of coronavirus, but the triune God of the Bible does. And I would encourage you to think about his sovereignty and his control and to be comforted by that. There's so much more you could say about that specific um, apologetic uh, idea, but... Uh, but, but uh, Time, time's getting away from us. That's number one. The second I would say would be this. Wake up each day. Wake up each day. And if you need to do this physically, then do it. Uh, young adults, I tell you, this is something I tell you to do, a kind of a, a practice, a, a, a rhythm, a discipline. And, and if you need to physically hold out your hands before the Lord, raise them up and ask him to give you ministry. Father, Give me ministry today. My family and I are thinking through how can we how can we do good evangelism during this time. I don't want my evangelistic my evangelistic passion and impulse to stop uh, because I'm having to because we're having to do these distancing realities. Lord, give me ministry today. May it be from your hand a clear opportunity to minister good words and good works during this time, demonstrating the gospel and declaring the gospel. Two ways I think, friends, that we uh, can make sure that we don't waste this Corona crisis. I hope it's helpful.